Welcome. Good morning or afternoon. We're going to be looking at lesson four, insuring and registering a vehicle here. There's a particular website, MPI. You've been there before. You might not be able to type this in properly, so I'm going to show you how to navigate to that website a little bit later. One of the things to keep in mind, all vehicles have to be insured. If you don't insure your vehicle, there's going to be big problems for you. I don't even know what those big problems might be. So don't test it though. Pay your insurance, make sure that you're registered. I think that what might happen is if you don't actually pay your insurance, get in an accident, you might not be covered. Um, so make sure to pay your insurance. When you buy it, you pay a premium, AKA the cost of the insurance. And there's four main ways in which you're able to identify what your premiums are. And that comes down to the type of vehicle you drive. Your insurance co costs are actually determined by that. It's associated with uh, the year, the make, the model. So if you're driving something like a Dodge, maybe it's a little bit cheaper, maybe not. Uh, for those that uh, don't like Fords, again, those might rain, range in there, a little bit higher, a little bit lower. But we can look that all up and we will be looking up some of that later where you can actually determine approximately how much you're going to pay on your insurance uh, any given year based on the make and the model and the year of your vehicle. Cost claims may also be lower for vehicles that uh, maybe have more safety features uh, that are maybe a little bit less expensive because the less expensive vehicle, uh, the less expensive it would be to actually fix it. If you're driving a Tesla versus uh, Dodge Dart or uh, Swift or whatever else, even in my vehicle, the, the Subaru uh, Impreza, it's gonna be a lot cheaper to fix. And in those situations, you're not gonna have to pay as much for your insurance premiums either. There could be uh, all those different safety features. The Canadian Loss Experience Automobile Rating or CLEAR system was developed by the Insurance Bureau of Canada and it was used to rate the claims experience for uh, various things, whether it's a car, a light truck, whether it's a motorcycle or a van. Often motorcycles, the larger the CC and especially if it's a, a sporty one as opposed to just the cruiser, it's going to be a lot more expensive. When I had my Suzuki 750, it was almost $2,000 for the insurance for, for the year, and you're only driving it for a couple months out of the year. So it's very, very expensive in comparison to a, a vehicle, a car, or even a truck. The IBC collects Canada-wide information about vehicles involved in collisions associated with costs. Comparing claim costs and risks for these different vehicles, clear systems benefits owners who insure vehicles that are likely to experience fewer and less likely or less costly claims. So number one, the type of vehicle you drive, that's going to be one of the ways in which your premiums are factored in. So how, how expensive it is, how many safety features there are, et cetera. And then possibly even like how many people actually get into accidents with that particular vehicle as well, or even what type of owner often owns that type of vehicle will also cause the, the, the insurance either to be higher or lower based on who it is that drives the vehicle. Where you live. There are four separate territories here. So you can see territory one is Winnipeg. Anything other than Winnipeg in the south is gonna be territory two. So we're dealing with uh, all of us being in territory two. Uh, maybe one day you will be in territory one. There's also exceptions and we'll deal with that too. You might even live in Neverville but be considered to be part of territory one. And we'll show you why in a second. And then these are the other two. I'm not sure why it goes one, two, four, three. Uh, but you can look into that maybe. Divide into four territories for their vehicle ratings. Each geographic region is identified with varying degrees of risk. The lower the risk, the lower your insurance rates. So if you're dealing with high congestion in the middle of traffic in Winnipeg versus uh, some lonely rural road, you're going to be more likely to get in an accident when there's a lot more vehicles around, uh, driving, or even cyclists. Uh, runners on the side of the road, gonna be a lot more likely to hit one of those if, uh, if there are more people to potentially hit. If you're commuting from Territory 2, um, AKA Neverville, and driving into Winnipeg to go to school or work more than four days a month. So more than four days a month, that's not very much. So basically if you have a job in the city and you're working more than once a week, um, then it will be the, the following year or more than 1600 kilometers in one insurance year 
the risk of a claim will be greater than those who do not commute into Winnipeg. Uh, for example, a student who lives in Territory 2 but travels to Winnipeg twice a week to attend college should insure as a commuter. So be aware of the fact that uh, depending where you live, it actually will cost you more or, or less money on your insurance. What you use it for. There are two different types of insurance. There is pleasure and all purpose. 99% of people will be using all purpose and there will be that 1% that uses pleasure. All purpose deals with uh, basically if you're using your car a lot of the time, um, you're going to be an all purpose. Pleasure is where it's like under a specific uh, number of kilometers. I want to, I don't know what it is exactly. I should double check that. Insurance rates uh, differ depending on which vehicle you use it for. Often it's going to be one of those like your your summer car that you're just putting, putting around on here and there, not very frequently. Uh, that would be more along the lines of your pleasure use. You're, you're very infrequently using your vehicle. So again, most people never insure their vehicle under pleasure because they're using it often daily, every other day, whatever. It's going to be all purpose over here. So here, for instance, if you drive only to grocery store and back, uh, pleasure use, you're like, uh, less likely to have a claim unless you're driving it regularly back and forth to work, to school, et cetera. The last thing that will affect the cost of your insurance is how many merits or demerits that you have. So at 16, you're going to have no merits. I don't know actually how it works for, for you guys or how, how the merits work. How many merits do you guys get? Uh, do you start getting them right away? So once... Once you have your license for a year at, at 17 uh, and a little bit, do you have one merit? Do you have two merits? Do any of you guys have have uh, one or two merits right now? Um, do any of you guys have some demerits? I'm curious. Let me know in the comments below if I put that in there. Safe driving means fewer claims. So if you're able to have more merits, it means that you've actually uh, driven according to the law and you're maintaining safety on the road. And that tells the insurance company, hey, we can actually lower their, their uh, I guess, insurance claim because they're going to be less likely to get in a car accident. And so if they're less likely to get in a car accident, they're less likely to make a claim. Uh, the high risk driving means more claims and higher premiums. Premiums discount depending on your driver safety rating. So if you're able to drive without getting a ticket for 15 years, you're going to have 15 merits. You're going to have a savings of only $30 on your driver premium, but the vehicle premium discount is at 33%, so quite a lot if you're looking at that. And if you start getting into the demerits over here, and these values are a little bit older. Um, I took this from a year or two ago, so these will even be newer now. So if you're at that minus 10 mark, that's $500, and then it starts really jumping up once you get into the minus uh, 15 and, and beyond that, where you're paying almost $2,000 a year for your license. And imagine that, say you're at minus 17, then you go to minus 16, minus 15, you're paying an extra like two grand, then almost two grand, then 1,500, then 1,300. It just really, really adds up over time. So be careful, be safe. Don't do like I did on my, uh, on my cross rocket, on my uh, motorcycle years ago. Don't go that fast when you're driving in your vehicle or if you ever get yourself a motorcycle. Just don't do it. All right. Avoid all those types of things. So it doesn't have to be speeding. It could be just any traffic convictions at all. So turn, turning right before 9 a.m., which is another ticket I got for, or... Uh, failure to yield was a ticket I got when I was like 16 or 17. So kind of stupid tickets right there. Uh, you can easily avoid that just, just by being a little bit wiser uh, with how you drive. Um, alcohol or drug related uh, suspensions, that's very bad. Uh, sometimes your car can be impounded or without a vehicle for a while, potentially uh, without a driver's for a long period of time too, uh, if you're choosing to do some of those uh, and drive. So just a bad, bad idea there. So anyways, those are the, the top four main things as to how your insurance affects the cost of your insurance. So just a quick recap, that's the type of vehicle you drive, it's where you drive in Manitoba, what you use it for, pleasure or all purpose, and then your uh, finally your driving record, which really affects it by quite a bit, you can see. So 15 years down the road, uh, have you driven perfectly and have 33% off, 
or are you way in the minuses and you're paying hundreds if not thousands of dollars extra every year so be wise there's a couple of things that uh the company asks asks for sorry this uh light turns off on me in the classroom uh when you go in there they ask you how much third-party liability do you want to be covered for the insurance company will pay for any damages you, you cause up to a maximum you choose and so uh the less coverage you have obviously it costs you less on your insurance the more coverage you have the more it will cost you um the minimum third-party liability is two hundred thousand dollars so imagine you're driving in your vehicle and you drive through the bus loop and then you crash into the front of this high school here and you cause tens of thousands of dollars, may, maybe even $300,000 worth of damage because you start a small little fire. Uh, the fire department comes, puts it out, thankfully, but now uh, there are about $300,000 worth of damage. If you had got third-party liability and only chosen the minimum amount because you're like, I don't want to pay any more than I have to, you would be on the hook for $100,000. So you have to be very, very careful that... Uh, that you're either driving safely or you increase your third party liability. $200,000 is not a lot. Uh, there was a business in Steinbeck that recently burned down and there was $10 million worth of damage. Now, obviously getting a car crash versus a building burning down, a little bit different, but uh, you just never know what, what you might, the cost that might be incurred by you hitting something. So be very careful with, uh, with how little third-party liability you choose. Um, you can choose uh, 500,000 um, and, and so on. So if you did choose 500,000, but you cost $600,000 worth of damage, you will have to pay $100,000 uh, as well. I don't know what all the increments are. I thought you could pay probably, or like get up to five or even $10 million coverage. I don't remember exactly what they were, but take a look at that. And now you will actually know what third-party liability is. It's, it's actually beyond just whatever your cut, covered for so it, it's when you when you have something beyond uh just the one car and the other car or even if you do have the different cars like how much does the damage total up up to maybe you knocked down some lights and then you did something else and and then ran into uh 20 cars as you were trying to get away from the police well now now you're gonna have some type of gigantic uh liability insurance and so if you have your third-party liability although in that situation if you're committing crimes like that i'm not sure if they would cover you either so you might not want to avoid running away from the police please don't uh next deductible your deductible can be 100 200 300 or 500 and it's kind of backwards if your deductible is 500 dollars, you're actually going to be paying less on insurance than if it was only 100 dollars and that reason being is because the $500 deductible covers for less things than the $100 deductible. The next thing is this, is that if you were to get in a car accident, you would have to pay the $500 deductible. Now, if you got in a car accident and you were having a $100 deductible premium, you'd only have to pay $100. You'd have to pay a lot less before the insurance company covers the rest of it. So uh, what else does a basic $500 uh, package cover? Well, if somebody was to attempt to steal your vehicle or successfully steal it, you would have to pay a $500 deductible. That would go along the same lines as glass replacement. If uh, you had some stone chips driving down uh, the 52, glass repair, uh, same idea. So whether it's, and glass repair, that is normally something where you have like a little chip where it's just beginning to happen. And you're like, oh, I really want to fix this before you do have to actually go ahead with the glass replacement. So glass repair is always a nice preventative measure. I've had to do that a couple of times on my vehicle where, where there's been a stone that hits it and then it chips a little bit. And you go in to replace that as soon as you possibly can so that it doesn't get larger and begin to cover your entire uh, windshield. Collision with an animal. Again, with a $500 deductible, you actually have to pay. So uh, if you're running into a deer, if you're running into other wildlife, you're going to have to pay for that. So hopefully it doesn't happen. Don't run into your pets either, uh, whether where you're at, it doesn't matter. Vandalism. There was an individual that, uh, that decided to kick my car. I actually saw the footprint on, on my car. This was when I was parked at uh, my condo in Steinbeck. So took a picture of it, brought it in. I didn't have to pay anything. Why? Because I didn't have the basic uh, package of $500. I had the $200 deductible. 
And as you notice, with $200 deductible, nil means you do not have to pay. So I paid nothing for somebody uh, so callously like kicking my car door. How stupid of them. And lastly, all other things. So whether your car starts on fire, and yes, that is a thing. Uh, as a firefighter, I've had to put out many car fires over the years. And uh, how, how, they, how they always start, I don't know. There was one guy that uh, was test driving his vehicle in, in Mitchell. So it wasn't his vehicle, just test, going for a test drive down a gravel road when all of a sudden the, car, uh, the car's engine bay just ignited in flames. And he quickly came to stop, jumped out of the vehicle, put it in park, of course, didn't let it roll away, and uh, watched as the vehicle that he was test driving basically uh, just kind of burnt up and uh, was unsalvageable. So yes, this does happen. Uh, partial theft and even hail. Hail damage, I've uh, experienced that at least once or twice on uh, the different vehicles I've owned over the years and uh, been able to make, make the, the claim for that. Now, as you go over here to the packages on the right, so say you go all the way to the far right to the $100 package, that will be more expensive. You're having to pay less on your deductible and it covers a lot more. You do not have to pay for a theft or attempt of theft. Um, and then moving on to the glass repair, you don't have to pay for your car, uh, car's glass to be repaired. Nor if you hit uh, an animal, would you have to pay for that? You just have to actually talk MPI. Uh, and often you have to make a claim with uh, the police as well on specific things. I'm not sure if with an animal, but uh, definitely if you're hitting another person. And by person, I mean like another car. Vandalism, same thing. Don't have to pay for 100 or 200. And uh, Again, you're always paying less if you do have to make uh, a claim. So the question is, is like how likely are you to get uh, get a claim? How likely is your car to get vandalized or to for you to get in a car accident or even for somebody else to hit you uh, or for there to be hail? So some of these things you can see, like whether it's colliding with an animal, whether it's hail, whether it's your car magically combusting into fire, whether it's some, somebody else vandalizing it. I had a friend, uh, we were at a bonfire once, and I, I left around one, one in the morning or so. Shortly after that, somebody came to his uh, truck, vandalized it, drew an inappropriate object on there, often something that uh, the students like to draw on the board, and uh, did in spray paint. My, my buddy ended up catching the guy and uh, phoned the police on him. And uh, if he didn't actually have the... The package two or one, uh, two or three here, he would have had to pay uh, to get that vandalism off there, to get that spray painted object off of there. So just be aware of that, that some of these aren't your fault. Some of these just happen. And uh, if that's the case, you might want to choose something like the two or $300 pack, uh, sorry, the 200 or $100 package. There was also last year, I think somebody, they had started their car in Niverville uh, to warm it up left the keys in it and it got stolen in the morning uh, so again that would be under theft here I'm not sure if they, they were covered for that if you're leaving your car keys in the car with it turned on like I'm not sure if MPI pays for that uh, you might want to check in on that these are good, good questions I'm asking maybe you should be asking yourself some questions too uh, with with these types of things come into class with a couple of questions that you might want to ask MPI saying like would would they actually cover that type of situation where you start your car, leave it running, go into 7-Eleven and pick up a Slurpee before you come out or you're at your house letting it warm up in the morning before, before you want to drive away. So that is deductible. This also causes uh, your insurance to either go up or down based on which package you choose. So if you're choosing the $500 package, it's going to be cheaper for your uh, overall insurance. If you're picking the $100 package because more is covered in there, it'll be more expensive. Just like third-party liability, if you choose for a larger third-party liability, if you're choosing for like five million coverage versus two hundred thousand, it will cost you more. So, how do you go about calculating insurance costs? You go to this website right right over here, and uh, I'll just pull that up. Here is the MPI website, and if we want to cycle through. I believe it's going to be under insurance. So insuring your vehicle, paying your insurance premiums, you're going to click on insurance. Once you get here, you're going to be talking about your insurance rates. And we can then go over here and say determining your rates. And 
at the bottom of that page, there is an actual insurance rate calculator. The link I give you on your paper is the exact same as what you end up seeing right over here. So we navigated there, so you can navigate there on your own, or you can just type it in, uh, make sure that all lowercase letters are lowercase, everything uppercase is uppercase. Um, let's try this out here where, where we can put both pieces on together here. All right. Unfortunately, this one doesn't work as well. Uh, let's do it like this then. Okay. That's a fail. Bear with me for a moment. Oh my. Watch me as I go. And back to this one. I just want to be able to see both both things at the same time here. Okay, Eve buys a lovely 2005 Ford station wagon. So if we're taking a look at this, we're going to go to passenger vehicle right over here. Uh, what year is it? I just finished saying 2005. And now we start going down this whole a uh, whole list here. So a list of the make. It was a Ford. It was a station wagon, so, but what type of station wagon was it? So we just keep reading here. The model is a Ford Taurus SEL, so a Ford Taurus SEL. And the body, we had said it was a station wagon. At this point, we can now continue. What is the postal code of your primary residence? So I believe this one might be some people's here in Neverville. I filled this out a couple times doing this. Yes, we're mental residents. Verify this. And continue. The third factor we consider on how you use your driver, uh, drive your vehicle. Do you drive to Winnipeg or, or drive partway there to work or more than four days a month or more than 1,600 kilometers in, in a year? So this, this is that amount. So if you're driving more than 1,600 kilometers, I think that's the di difference between all-purpose all, all and pleasure. If it's less than 1,600, it's going to be just pleasure. So it doesn't take long to drive 1,600 kilometers, by the way. Do you drive to and from more than that? Definitely, yes. And we continue. The last of the four risk factors that affect your insurance rate is your driving record. Uh, Where's your driving record on here? Well, let's just take a look over here and see if it uh, if it mentions anything for her. She lives in Neighborville, so we got that. Uh, she drives to work and for personal use, so yes, it's going to be the all-purpose. She currently has four merits. So we can go here and, oh, it doesn't specifically say how many merits anything is. So let's go back to over here. Four merits is 15% at least according to these notes. And again, that might've changed a little bit. So we're gonna click on the 15% discount based on the fact that there's four merits. So again, if you're reading the merits, you're going to your list for merits here and you're saying, well, what discount do you get for having four merits? It's 15%. So that's where I typed in 15% there. And beyond that, it says uh, she wants $2 million third-party liability. And anything else we need to keep in mind here? What level of deductible? Does it say yes, $200 deductible? All right, so let's take a $200 deductible. Third party liability is 2 million. Oh, so look at that. You can do 5 million, 7 million, and 10 million. So from 200,000 all the way to 10 million. So she's kind of going in the middle of the pack there. I think even mine is right, right around the 2 million mark, just in case. Would you like the optional extension loss of coverage use? Uh, I think she had said no to that. She doesn't need extended loss of coverage or extra protection of any sort. She's not driving that expensive a vehicle. It's quite old already. And so she doesn't need any extended loss of coverage. She's hoping to get that thing fixed quite, uh, uh, quite quickly. So there's nothing that needs to be added there. Would you like the optional new vehicle protection or lease vehicle uh, coverage protection? No. If the vehicle is worth more than $50,000, you can actually make sure to insure the excess amount there so that, that if you have a $100,000 car, um, 
insurance company will not cover that extra 50,000 unless you're actually like increasing it to uh, an, uh, an additional $50,000. So make sure that you're aware of that when, when you're uh, buying an ex very expensive vehicle. What payment option would you like? What does it say here? Determining the difference you will have to pay for either going with 12 pre-authorized payments or four or even one. What's the difference there? So we'll start with 12 and then we can estimate and calculate. And so in the past, the price uh, a couple of years ago when I did this was 1442, 1431 and 1407. Uh, now the price is for the full year. Ah, look at that. It went down. It's 1378 last year. It's only 1219 this year. So 1219 this year. Let's see if we can uh, step back one without having to uh, change absolutely everything. I don't want to start a new one. I just want to change one little piece of information here. Change insurance. I hope it doesn't change everything. Okay, good. It doesn't. Go to four payments now. And we're looking just at the total amount here. So you can see how much it costs for some of these things. So to have, a, have that $200 deductible, it's going to cost you $117. The basic premium is 9, nine or 14. You have third party liability, which will be $14. Uh, insurance, et cetera, or interest. Registration, plate use, all that kind of stuff. Perfect, perfect. Uh, total, 12 11 this time. And then lastly, let's take a look if you pay it right in full. How much do you actually save by paying it all at one amount? $11.91. So we went from $11.91. The lights go off again. $11.91 all the way to $12.19. Uh, so $9 to $1,200 and then another $19. So it's you're only saving $28. So if you really need that money, then maybe you just go with uh, the, every month you're paying it off. So $28 is not actually that, that much. But if you're talking about that amount of money uh, within, say, twelve nineteen, what percent would that be? That's about 2%. So you're paying about 2% 2, 2%, uh, to have it financed o over the year. If, uh, if that's the choice that you choose to do. So you have to be 2% more than you would have otherwise. So sometimes it's a convenience thing. Sometimes it's like you don't want to pay all it right at once. Sometimes you like to pay just like each month you're paying a specific amount and then you don't have to worry about it. I often pay it just one foul swoop. Then I don't have to worry about it for the rest of the year as long as I have my money in April or whenever it is that they, they ask for it. So that is how you go about taking a look at calculating your insurance costs. Um, you're going to be trying some of this stuff out here. So there's different scenarios. Try to find a vehicle that would be uh, the most costly to insure with the following conditions. And so you have, have to find these conditions right over here. But after that, the type of vehicle that you choose is, is up to you. But with zero merits means that you're going to have 0% uh, like subtracted, 0% discount. Um, and then all, all this other stuff. Uh, and then afterwards, you're also going to try to find a vehicle that would be the cheapest to insure. And so there's a little bit of a competition here. Who in the class is able to find the vehicle that's going to be the most expensive? I want you to screenshot uh, the, the MPI uh, printout for that. So when we go back here, you would screenshot this uh, so that we could see what type of vehicle it is right over here. And then even how expensive uh, the insurance was. So currently, I guess the record is only about $1,200. I'm sure you can find something a lot cheaper and even a lot more expensive for your insurance uh, for the year. Uh, $1,200 insurance, not, not too expensive there. So that's your, your step right there. Also try changing one of criteria, see how it actually affects the, the final cost. Look for any patterns that, that you might find. So even if we went back, so this was $1,191 right over here. If we go back to changing our insurance and we just change one thing, 1191 we change uh, from 2 million to 10 million. How does that affect our uh, it only affects it by $11. We're paying $11 more now and we're getting $8 million more worth of uh, insurance coverage. So just for for that that price, not that that crazy. 
So now we're at 1202. Let's change one more thing here. Let's go with a more expensive deductible, a $100 deductible. How does that affect our payment? We're almost paying $100 more uh, for $100 insurance versus, uh, or sorry, $100 deductible versus $200. So we could be paying as much as almost $1,300. And what if we change it to the cheapest amount? How much would we be able to save then? Assuming we're hoping that we're not getting in any accidents, there's going to be no hail, no animals getting hit with our vehicle. It drops by uh, by a lot there. Almost, uh, well, even if we ran this up to 1100 it was almost 1300 So that's a $200 change right there. It's only a $100 change from the 200 to the $500 deductible. But you begin to see... How, how these values change and you're able to see this. They say it's an estimate, but it's pretty close to the accurate values that you're gonna actually be paying when you go to MPI. So now it's up to you to find the most expensive vehicle out there with the these the specific criteria right over here um, and do a screenshot of that and then also the, the cheapest and then do a screenshot of that. That will be your assignment. There will be marks for that as well. So it's up to you. Good luck and have fun.